Welcome to the video blog. We're at the T3PR conference, and I'm standing next to Jeremy Pepper. Hello, Jeremy. It's great to see you, Doug. Great. Now, Jeremy has a couple of roles in the PR world, as most people do nowadays. You know him from his very popular blog, Pop PR Jobs, but also he does public relations at Boingo. So one of the things he told me he wanted to talk about is how social media needs to be integrated in a PR campaign. Should it be a separate add-on item? Or does it really have to be thought through from the beginning? Well, I've always been of the big belief that it should be thought through from the beginning. It's not a separate standalone thing. It's integrated into the whole scheme of things. You know, we've known each other for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And when I was working with Kodak, we weren't calling it social media. So it's like, oh, hey, there's these couple of these enthusiast sites out there. Um, DP Review with Phil Askey, Steve's Digicam, Imaging Resource, uh, Digital Image, Digital Imaging. I think I got them all. Okay. Um, and these were just called enthusiast sites. Now they're blogs. Right. And we were also doing outreach to uh, message boards for the professional photography. We didn't think of it as something brand new and different. It's just like, hey, we got to reach the public. So what's happening now is people are like, oh, shiny happy toy. No, it's integrated into your PR outreach to begin with. It's the first step. You shouldn't be doing like, oh, we should do separate plans. Like, let's do the plan as a whole and integrate social media aspects into it. So if we're doing that, what should be part of the social media plan incorporated? What are the key things that you must do? Well, it's interesting because it's always different for every client. You know, right, as you noted, I'm doing public relations for Boingo. And when I went in, I thought, you know, Boingo is, we do airport Wi-Fi, so... 30. Obviously, he's doing public relations for Boingo. Thanks for the plug there. <laughs> well, just, I mean, the quick thing is like we do airport Wi-Fi, so we're very business traveler oriented. How am I going to reach these people? Well, I'm going through the regular travel reporters. I'm doing the hardcore traditional media relations, but I'm also working with mobile bloggers because we have a mobile application. I'm working with travel bloggers. I'm working with technology bloggers. I'm going to all these different audiences that would care about us, would, would be interested in the tool, these digital nomads, but I'm still doing traditional press. I integrated it and like, you know, I set up a Twitter account immediately. I'm searching, whenever somebody talks about the company, I respond to them, if it's, even if it's negative or positive. If it's negative, I ask them to email me directly and tell me what the problem is. Uh, if, if they want a refund, I'll go over to customer service and get them a refund. Now, question, is there any risk for these bloggers that they're really becoming traditional media themselves, and the new bloggers, the new untraditional media, are sort of the individuals and the people who are sharing stuff on Facebook and Friendster and Twitter and all those kinds of sites? Well, that's the funny thing is, like, you know, the, you get a lot of these top bloggers, I don't want to be pitched, but then how are you getting information? It's the whole PR is dead meme, which... Yeah, from our web influencer survey, we found like in many ways they're becoming the traditional media, the good with the bad, with some notable exceptions. Oh, very much so. And it, it, it's, it's, it's the public. Like, PR got so caught up in the media and the press that we're forgetting that we're reaching out to the public. Bloggers are part of the public now, and if you're not... The number one thing you need to do is monitor. You need to find out where your name is out there and make sure that you are actually engaging the customer, making sure that you're listening to them. And if you don't want to engage, and there are a lot of companies that don't want to engage, at least listen and improve your product from what people are saying. Yeah, and I'm going to share with the audience one fun fact in public relations <laughs> history, and then I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about your blog and where you see things going in the next year or two within PR. So I'll give you some time to noodle. piece of history we share in PR is Jeremy worked with me on Andy Parr, the former Today Show gadget guru's last satellite media tour, because after he finished later that night, he was busted for having a significant amount of cocaine, and what we can both attest to, he definitely did not share. But moving on now, your points about blogging, what are you covering and where's PR going in the next one, two years that PR practitioners need to know about? What's interesting, I have, I have so many blog posts I start to write, and I have them all saved in Word, well actually it's text files, and I just need to get out and push them, but PR is dead is a really big meme online, online, and a lot of the bloggers like to talk about how PR is dead, and it's not dead, but it's changing, but I'm starting to see interesting things about, we're so caught up in consumer tech and tech and consumer PR, we don't ever look at entertainment, and it's changing a lot. Right. And what happens in publicity, because that was the original PR, is going to eventually affect PR from, so I'm wondering is, if the PR is dead meme not really that off. Because I think the publicity shops aren't embracing social media, aren't getting hurt more than anybody else, and we're just not hearing about it much. So I think what we're going to see in the next year is PR is going to have to change. And I wrote, 
after I left, left my last agency, like PR is losing social media to marketing and advertising. They do a much better job at selling it into the clients. We're going to need to figure out how to fix that if we don't want to lose this and be a better resource for our clients on how to integrate everything. You know, I've, I've heard people talk about how their ad agencies quote $100,000 plus for a YouTube campaign. Mm -hmm. this, how much does this big cost you? Um, this one's costing us about 50000 and that includes your fee. <laughs> But I mean, like, a hundred thousand is is astronomical for YouTube. Of course, it's ridiculous. And I think um, I think that's a the deep dark hidden secret is social media is not cheap, but doesn't need to be exorbitantly priced. And I, they had to be adding on so many of their own fees. Before you destroy any future potential for my own business, I do want to <laughs> thank you for joining us. And the other key point to emphasize is it's really the smartest strategy and planning the initiative and then being able to execute it, which does take bandwidth, time, and effort. A final thought? Well, that's the thing. Like. I get the emails from your salesperson, Cheryl? Um, probably, that might be, we'll just use my name, Doug Simon, or it could be Eric Wright or Christine. Christine, I know it's a CH. Okay. And uh, people get so caught up in social media, they forget traditional media. My mom and dad watch TV still. Mm -hmm. I watch TV. I read the newspaper. There's that whole middle part of the country that we like to ignore for some reason that's still doing traditional media. Right. You cannot get away from the morning shows. And that's why I love your company and what you do and why I always kick my clients to give me money. Mm -hmm. Because social media, so, uh, social, satellite media tours, the morning shows rock. And you get the people in the morning that are watching it for the weather and for the fluffery so they don't need to think too hard when they get off and drive in the morning. Cool. Well, thanks for that and thanks for being with us. Thanks so much.